as Wendy, Wendy to lead us the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, we praise and thank you for gathering us today. Please keep us safe always, guide us in everything we do, and please give us the knowledge and wisdom and understanding for us to be able to understand our topic for today. And please also guide our teachers in in making this lesson or educating us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, good morning everyone. I am sorry for I was not able to meet you last um, last Tuesday. Okay, because uh, we had an academic seminar during that time. Uh, but regardless of our absence last meeting, I hope that you were able to uh, you were able to make yourself active in the learning management system, and that um, and that you have started uh, reading the modules, and at the same time understanding or selecting a pyramid for the weekly task. So today we will proceed to a new lesson chapter or a new chapter in our course. Okay, and that is about, um, and the new chapter is about the, it's about distinguishing and constructing various paper and pencil sets. Okay, and uh, in this course, uh, we will be looking into, okay, what table of specifications is, okay, the general tips about testing, when to use the different types of tests or paper and pencil tests, uh, how to plan the test, uh, guidelines in writing the different test types or different pencil, uh, uh, paper and pencil test types. Okay, but before we start our discussion, allow me to remind or allow me to congratulate uh, those teams who got a good score or who earned a good score in the um, in uh, last week, uh, last week uh, weekly task, and that is rubric making. Um, there were some who did get uh, who did get a perfect score because most of you failed. Uh, or most of you, I think, failed to provide a good descriptor for each criteria in each level or in each uh, in each level of the learning continuum. Okay, I think there there's really uh, there's really a uh, you really you still have to develop your skill in developing highly quantitative uh, descriptors for each uh, level for each uh, for each level of the learning continuum. Okay, because there were some of you who just provided who merely provided um, who merely provided uh, there were some of you who merely provided a generic descriptor and not a real descriptor for each level of the learning continuum. When we say generic descriptor, nagiging generic ang analytic rubric kung yung description mo ay hindi siya quantitative. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya mamemeasure na, hindi siya mamemeasure ng, ng objectively. Okay. So for example, yung iba sa inyo, naging generic yung kanilang analytic rubric, yung kanilang descriptor, because they just mentioned of, for example, uh, most, uh, few, and others. Wala talaga siyang, uh, wala talaga siyang sukat talaga para para ma-measure kung ano yung few, ma-measure kung ano yung mod. Okay? Um I think there was one who there was one who who were able out uh, there, there was one team who was able or that was able to develop a good or a quantitative descriptor only that they were not able to that team uh, that team did able to to sustain. Okay? The 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 they were uh, that team did able to sustain a good descriptor in all the criteria or success indicators set in the or in their rubric. So yun lang ang naging problema. Kapag sinabi kong uh, quantitatively quantitatively uh, planned uh, descriptor, dapat meron kayong number. For example, one to two. Uh, the the team. Uh, the team. Uh, the team incurred one to two grammatical lapses and others. That's how that's how uh, that's how the descriptors are supposed to be written quantitatively. Okay, so yun lang naman yung naging problema. Mostly yung sa descriptors and at the same time 
doon sa inyong grammar. Okay? Doon sa inyong grammar and spelling. So, doon na nagkaroon ng problema. Okay? So, with that, may we now proceed with our uh, with our new discussion, the new chapter of our course. Okay? On, um, as I have said, on construct, on distinguishing and constructing various paper and pencil sets. So, we proceed first with first subtopic under this unit on table of specifications or TOS. Okay. Okay, so we now proceed to our discussion, the first subtopic under Lesson 4 on Distinguishing and Constructing um, Tests. So for this chapter, we will be focusing on uh, paper and pencil tests. So we expect that uh, we will be discussing about how to do a table of specification, uh, the different guidelines as regards uh, constructing the different uh, constructing tests using the different uh, test types and others. Okay, so uh, the first slide speaks of uh, the table of specifications and it says there uh, promoting higher levels of understanding. Uh, in this lesson, we will later be learning that it's also true. Okay, it's true. Uh, doing a table of specification that we can actually help our students advance their level of understanding. Because so, natin as we go through with our discussion. Now, this uh, this uh, presentation has the following content. Of course, the first one is we will be defining what table of specification is. After that, uh, we will learn about uh, designing a table of specification, the different steps or procedures in doing or in creating TOS, and the third one, why TOS, meaning to say we will be dealing with the benefits of uh, the benefits uh, brought about by doing and presenting table of specifications for our learners, and what benefit would this give to teachers also. So these are the things that we will be discussing in this presentation. So when we say table of specifications, okay, it is a chart which describes the topics to be covered by a test and the number of items or points which will be associated with each topic. So it's particularly about preparing a paper and pencil test. It's, it's particularly about uh, what content or what learning content should be covered by a test that we ask our students complete at the end of every major grading period or, or quarter of our discussion. Okay? And also it's about deciding how many items will, will, will we be giving them okay, to assess their levels of understanding of the lesson uh, we discuss to them, of the learning content we discuss to our learners. Okay? Now, what is the purpose of uh, doing table of specification? First, it says there, it is to identify the learning achievement domain being measured and to ensure that a fair and representative sample of questions appears on the test. Because there are times uh, that teachers would ask students to complete a test or complete an exam, tapos realize ng mga bata na wala man lang tanong sa chapter na ito, konti man lang ang tanong sa learning content na ito, samantalang uh, the teacher consumed uh, two meetings to discuss the lesson, pero wala man lang tanong, isang tanong tungkol dun sa learning content na ito. So that is the purpose of the table of specification, to ensure that topics being discussed by the teacher, okay, by the teacher, uh, are well represented in a summative assessment using paper and pencil test. Okay? Minsan kasi, kung may mga teachers na nagpapa-exam, na 
sila pa rin nire-review ng mga estudyante yung buong coverage ng for example ng prelims pero bigla na lang wala pa lang tanong doon sa isang chapter o kaya sobrang dami ang tinanong dito sa chapter na ito na hindi naman na-discuss si teacher so those are things that we have to look into those are things that the TOS would resolve okay so that learning content or yeah learning contents are fairly represented in the summative test or paper and pencil test being okay being given to students to assess or to gauge or measure their level of understanding okay or level of learning achievement about the lesson being discussed by the teacher then the second purpose of doing table of specifications is to construct a test that focuses on the key areas and weight those different areas based on their importance. So, it is sabihin, for example, kung, napaka, na, kung mahaba yung diskusyon na, na ibinigay ni teacher, na ginamit ni teacher doon sa chapter na iyon, doon sa learning content na iyon, it is expected na dapat mas marami siyang mga questions as regards to that topic. Okay? Kung sa tingin ni teacher na napakahalaga ng konsepto na tinalakay niya dun, dun sa chapter na iyon, yung halaga ng konsepto ang maging basehan niya kung ilang mga tanong ang dapat i-include niya tungkol doon sa mahalagang konsepto iyon. That is what we mean by the second purpose, by this second purpose and last purpose of doing table of specifications. Okay? Now, please take note that a table of specifications provides the teacher with evidence that a test has content validity that it covers what should be covered. Okay? Kaya nga ideally, you, we are not, uh, teachers should not supposed to include questions about a certain learning content if that learning content has never been taught or has never been discussed by the teacher. So yun po yung, yung ibig sabihin ng, ng sinasabi nating table of specification. Uh, to check validity of content. And content would be valid if these learning contents being part of the test are re or were really, should I say, were really discussed or were really, uh, were, really, uh, um, were really discussed or were really presented by the teacher during the period, uh, during the period when that content has been, uh, has been targeted or has been learned uh, by the set learners or by the set students. Okay? Hindi at ang nating content validity. Na ang mga nilalamang pagkatuto na nabanggit doon sa mga katanungan ay talaga bang, ay talagang naituro o natalakay ng nasabing guro. Okay? Now, this is, uh, this is how a POS looks like. Okay, ganyan siya. I'd say, it, uh, the, this is a, uh, this is a uh, uh, this is a generic format of a table of specification. It's a five-column chart. Okay, the first column is about the level. The second column about the outcomes being targeted by the item, by the item, by the test item. So indicate the test I, test numbers here of uh, test numbers here then after that the total number of items per each uh, outcome or level then the percentage okay of the question um sagit lang answer alduin okay so this is a generic um table of specification so if you observe uh we only considered the the bloom's taxonomy of objective particularly under committee because the purpose of the paper and pencil test is really about the level of understanding it's really about uh, development a uh, development of the cognitive uh, learning domain of the student okay, yun po ang purpose talaga ng, uh, anyway uh, paper and pencil test purpose is to really measure to really gauge the students uh, cognitive and uh, cognitive uh, cognitive learning domain Kaya nga dun sa mga, when we create tests, when we draft tests, we usually consider these cognitive level, cognitive levels of learning. By remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. For example, under remembering, 
the objective, the outcome here is identify the different domains and categories of learning. So, itong outcome na ito will be met, okay, will be met by the students if they would answer, okay, items 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Then another is understanding, explain how to write learning outcomes for each domain and category of learning. So, items 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, five items. Applying, write learning outcomes for each domain and category of learning. So 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19, analyzing distinguished, appropriate and inappropriate learning tasks towards the achievement of learning outcomes. Items 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20, then evaluating is determine, determine the alignment of learning outcomes and learning tasks. Items 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25, Tapos creating, mas maraming items so part to 20 points siya. Bakit? Because this is the highest level or highest level of, co of the cognitive learning domain. Okay? Kasi ito naman talaga yung purpose natin because this is already the application of all what they have under of all what they have remembered, understood, applied, analyzed, and evaluated. So, ang, ang, ang maganda sa table of specification class is for it to, to make sure or to make certain that teachers are that teachers are developing or teachers are gauging or measuring all levels of the cognitive learning domain. Okay, pero siyempre, titignan din natin pinaka-importante dapat ito yung last part, yung pinaka-mataas yung creating. Okay, so distribution of the different levels being targeted by the different test items in a paper and pencil set. Okay, so kaya nga sinasabi natin, Sa isang exam, sa isang test, hindi pwede na lahat ay mahirap. Hindi pwede na lahat ay hot. We make sure that these different levels of cognitive learning domain should really should really appear in our test, in our exam. That's the purpose of the table of specification. Okay? And, and this has to be done to make sure that all types of learners are being, all types of learners are being uh, considered in the construction of the test while while measuring the different levels, whether lot or hot, okay, of learning. So, yun ang purpose ng table of specification. Kaya ang sinasabi ko sa inyo, in our recent, in our prelim examination, nakita ko na valid yung exam, na valid yung, yeah, valid yung prelim, prelim exam, because when I tried to plot your scores in a grid, nakita ko na ang distribution ay normal curve. Ibig sabihin, pag normal curve, ganyan yung distribution niya. Ibig sabihin, meron mga nakakuha ng mababang score, pero meron din mga maraming nakakuha ng pasadong score. So, so ibig sabihin, pag normal curve siya, ibig sabihin, valid yung nasabing exam. Valid yung nasabing test. Okay? So, yun, yun yung purpose ng table of specification. So, this is how to do it. So, later, ito yung guide mo when you are already to draft the set uh, test or the set exam. Okay? Now, how to design a table of specification? Please take note that the TOS is designed based on the list of learning outcomes. Can review yung mga learning outcomes mo ulit? yung mga topics na dinisat mo sa klase, yung time na nilaan mo nung tinalakay mo yung nasabi nila namang pagkatuto, okay? yung mga chapter na nasa textbook na sinonsider mo, at yung emphasis na binigay mo sa bawat learning content. So these are the things that you have to consider when you do designing of your table of specification when you do the design of your table of specification. Okay? Hindi lamang na basta gagawa ka na lamang at kung ano lang maalala mo na, na topic, yun lang gagawin mong test question. Hindi pwede ang ganun. You have to consider your learning outcomes, yung mga, mga bunga ng pagkatutong nilaan mo sa bawat nilalamang pagkatuto, yung mga tinalakay mo na nilalamang pagkatuto, yung, yung ginugol mong oras para talakayin yung nasabing uh, paksa o nasabing, nasabing nilalamang pagkatuto, yung mga mga nilalamang pagkatuto na na na, na, na kinuha mo mula sa textbook at yung at yung mga at yung 
yung talagang yung talagang malalaking ideya na sinalakay mo sa klase. So these are the different things that you have to consider when you design a table of specification. So malamang sabihin natin na kung marami akong ginugol na oras sa pagkakatalakay po dito sa nilalamang pagkatutong ito, so we expect, students would certainly expect na maraming tanong tungkol doon. Yung binigyan mo ng focus, yung binigyan mo ng emphasis na natalakayan sa klase, na nilalamang pagkatuto sa klase, yun ang bibigyan mo ng maraming items sa nasabing exam. So ngayon, mag-i-guess mag na ako ngayon that certainly marami rin mga questions as regards writing learning outcomes, as regards assessing learning outcomes kasi nga napakahalaga ito sa inyo bilang mga guro sa hinaharap. Okay? Now, we proceed to the procedure. So, these are the five steps involved in creating a table of specifications. First, you identify the test objectives and learning outcomes first, yung sinabi natin kanina. Then, after identifying the test objectives and learning outcomes, you decide on the type of objective test to be prepared. For example, uh, uh, for example, itong outcome na ito, ano ba ang, ano, ano ba ang, ano ba ang gagawin ko? Okay? Would it be multiple choice? Would it be uh, simple recall, would it be alternative response, multiple response test, and others, or essay. So you decide now per outcome kung anong class and test type ang gagamitin mo. Then after you decide on this, that's the time that you prepare a table of specification already. Okay? Yung, yung pinakita ko sample ka na format in your table of specification. Then after doing your table of specification, that's the time that you want to construct already the draft test item. And uh, please take note, no? when you prepare the table of specification, make sure that you make use of the six levels, six levels of the cognitive learning domain. Make sure that all these cognitive learning domains are well represented, or the levels of the cognitive learning domain are well represented in your table of specification. Then after that, you construct the draft test item. Okay? You construct the draft test item. Then, ideally, yung draft test item is supposed to be answered by a sample size in class used for tryout and validation. Okay. Paano yung sinasabi natin tryout and validation? Pag sinabi natin tryout and validation, uh, this would mean that uh, this would mean that the test draft has to be tried okay, to a group of pupils or learners so for you to determine first the characteristics, uh, the item characteristics to item analysis, alin sa mga items na iyon ang maraming hindi nakasagot, alin sa items na iyon ang alin sa items na iyon ang halos lahat uh, tama ang sagot. That's item analysis. Okay. And to determine the characteristics of the test itself. Ibig sabihin, para makita natin kung valid ba siya, kung well represented ba yung mga topic, kung reliable ba siya at kung practical ba siya na kailangan alamin o kailangan masagot ng mga estudyante. Okay? That's the purpose of the tryout and validation. Okay? So that's it. That's the five steps. Now, we will now proceed to the benefit of the table specification. How can the use of a table of specifications benefit your students, including those with special needs? Please take note that there are two benefits of TOM. The first one, it improves the validity of teacher-made tests. Okay? Meaning to say, uh, TOS will help teachers to ensure that there is a match. We just said that there is congruency. Ito yung sabi na natin alignment. If there's an alignment or congruency between what you have taught as a teacher and what you have tested to the learner, dapat magbamatch yung dalawang yun. Dapat align yung dalawang yun. Because remember, as we, have, as we always said in our discussion about assessment, that classroom assessment should be driven by classroom teaching, which itself is driven by student learning outcomes. So I mean to say, even our test, even our paper and pencil test should really measure the attainment of the learning outcomes that we intend our student, we intend for our students to meet or to achieve. 
Okay, yun naman talaga ultimate purpose ng learning. To check whether the learning outcomes are met or are achieved by our learners or by our students. Okay? Then the second one is, it can improve student learning. How would that be possible? Because if we provide the TOS to our students during instruction, okay, during instruction, students or learners can easily recognize the main ideas, the important ideas that we would be discussing to them, the key skills that they need to develop when we discuss the lesson, and at the same time, they can easily identify also and understand also the relationship among concepts we discuss to them. Similarly with the rubric, no? when we provide the rubric to our students prior to the actual, uh, actual on-task behavior of our students, when I say on-task, ito na yung actual paggawa nila ng requirement, they would certainly be guided to the success indicator that they need to that they need to uh, to meet in doing that performance-based assessment. Ito kasi is paper and pencil-based assessment. Tong, tong test item, tong, tong, tong tatawag yung examination. Okay? Kung baga, si table of specification ang nagiging rubric. Okay? Ang nagiging rubric kapag nagpapa paper and pencil test tayo sa mga siyante. Okay? When we ask students to complete a performance-based assessment, we make use of a rubric. When we ask our students to take an exam, a paper and pencil test, we make use of the table of specification to guide them of the important concepts or main ideas or key skills that they need to really learn, that they need to advance themselves of prior taking the exam. That's why if you observe, all our quizzes, okay, our, uh, all our quizzes and all our weekly tasks, okay, are contributory to prepare you towards better score in the exam. Okay, now, taking, uh, uh, considering that, now let me ask you, okay, siyempre magagaling sa inyo, let me ask you, uh, what have you observed with the weekly tasks I ask you complete or even the quizzes I ask you to take? I don't know, observing nyo sa mga yon. Sige nga, anyone? Diba, I keep providing you weekly tasks for each lesson chapter or for each chapter of the lesson. And at the same time, I provide I provided you with that. So what have you observed with this assessment, uh, with this assessment task, which I usually ask you to complete before taking the quiz? And what do you observe about the quiz I ask you to complete before taking the exam? Sige nga. Uh, may I request anyone from the class to answer the question? We have uh, 10 uh, students in class available. Okay, 10 students in class in our, in our uh, conference now. Anyone from you would like to answer the question? What have you observed with the weekly task I pro uh, with the weekly task I provide you before you take the quiz, and what have you observed about the quiz that I usually ask you to complete before you take the prelim exam or before you have taken the prelim exam? Using uh, papakayo, you make use of the chat if uh, your connection is quite slow. Anyone? Yes, Jovin. Thank you, Jovin. Sir, um, in terms of the yung giving of yung quizzes, sir, prior to examination, sir. Uh -huh. Sir, it's a, it is a combination of the module and the yung mga discussion na ina-emphasize mo sir and parang ano siya sir um parang dalawang parang dalawang handout yung meron kami yung handout na binibigay mo at yung mga, mga inputs na galing lang yung 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 inputs na parang yung words mo la pa sir uh -huh. na galing la pa sa na na meron dun sa mga exams sir okay so we need to say 
uh, the quizzes help you prepare for the exam, tama? Apo, uh, How about the Lahat ng con okay. Sir, ayun, yun, yun din naman, yun yung parang preparation the... prior to the quiz. Okay, very good. Apo, sir. And that is supposed to be done when we say paper and pencil test. Tama si Jovin. Dapat ganun, ideally, dapat ganun talaga siya. That our assessment task, our weekly task, should be something that prepares our students for the next task, and that is the quiz. And the quiz should also prepare the student for a bigger task, bigger assessment task, or summative assessment task, and that is the exam. Okay, meron bang time sa buhay ninyo bilang estudyante na nagpagawa si teacher ng ganitong activity, pero nung nagpa-quiz siya, hindi naman nakatulong yung activity na iyon para doon sa quiz. May mga moments ba na gano'n nangyari? Marami na sir. <laughs> marami ba? Ha? Marami, so, marami talaga. Marami ba? Oh, kasi, kasi ang nakikita ko kasi, you know, sometimes uh, itong problema kasi natin yung alignment, no? this, this has always been an issue kasi eh. Kung may sinasabi tayong alignment ng outcome doon sa task na hindi na pinapagawa ng natin, dapat meron ding alignment na dinidiscuss natin yung pinapagawa natin doon sa summative exam or doon sa paper and pencil test. Kasi minsan parang ang layo-layo ng exam doon sa pinaggagawa natin sa klase. Di ba parang nangyayari yan minsan? Jobis, tayo nalang mag-usap dalawa kasi bukang tayo lang talaga mag-usap ngayon. <laughs> Mali ba po meron gusto sabihin si Michael kasi medyo nag-unmix si Michael. So, parang maraming beses, kahit yung estudyante, ako may mga ganyang moments na nagugulat ako na, nagugulat ako na sabi ko, parang yung in-exam natin, parang parang walang na-discuss na ganito o parang hindi nakatuloy yung ginawa natin sa klase. Kaya yung sabi natin, we check the alignment always, no? Titignan natin, o ngayon, magiging buro kayo sa inaharap. Dapat yun ang titignan din ninyo. If you really would like your students to learn from you, make sure that everything has been aligned so well. Make sure that everything has been in congruence with all the tasks you ask them to in class. Okay? Katulad yung example ko. Ganito. Diba? Ito yung concrete example yung ginawa natin sa klase. I ask you to write, diba? I ask you to write a learning outcome. Tama? And at the same time, I ask you to evaluate whether the learning activity is aligned with the learning outcome as a team, di ba? Team yung ginawa yun. Then after that, nagpa-quiz ako sa inyo. So yung quiz ninyo, it's about identifying uh, identifying, where, uh, identifying the different learning outcomes and at the same time, checking whether the provided, the provided learning task is supportive of the learning outcome. So ganoon din ang quiz ninyo. So you expect me then that that can also be part of your midterm exam. Because that is how assessment is supposed to be done. That is how summative exam or paper and pencil test is supposed to be done. They have to be aligned. They have to be in congruence with one another. Okay? May mga tanong po ba? May iba naman gusto kong marinig yung boses ninyo. I have a question lang. Sir, ngayong time na to, sir, it's, di ba, sa new, new normal na, sir. Um, kasi, um, some teachers are only giving um modules lang, sir, without discussion, sir. And meron yung mga, yung mga assessments nila, like, they have, yung sa kapatid ko, sir, is 47 pages all in all, pero yung binibigay kasi na assessment is 10 items, true or false lang. So parang yung yung 10 items or false parang yung, yung feeling nung kapatid ko sir is parang wag nila siyang mag-review kasi 47 pages siya nang haba tapos 10 items lang naman pala yung ibibigay tapos true or false pa naman. Okay. Sir. Yung siya sabi natin may alignment na naman ano kasi kung Google sa naman Jovin so yung sabi natin magbigay ka ng sobrang habang module. Eh yung sabi natin yung computer also yung 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 value ng mga content. Magbigay ka ng sobrang habang module. So, bigla ang assessment po, 10 items lang. So, 
when it comes to when it comes to uh, when it comes to the size kumbaga, when it comes to the amount or when it comes to the length of the module the summative assessment is not in congruence with okay with the learning content you have provided this is sabi natin kanina kaya sabi natin kanina before you design your table of specifications before you construct a test make sure na consider mo yung haba ng learning content consider mo din kung consider mo din yung yung oras na inilaan mo nung tinalakay mo na sabi learning content at consider mo din yung iba pang mga activities na ibinigay mo sa mga estudyante mo at doon nakadepende yung number of items na ipapas exam mo sa kanila doon sa factors na iyon okay ah uh, usually ito ang problema kasi natin tama rin si Jovin so bakit walang discussion let me just let me just clarify this kasi in the new normal okay in the new normal there is no need okay there is no need actually actually sa academic policy natin wala na kalagay na na requires na requires teacher na requires teacher to conduct conferences to conduct Google Meet, uh, Zoom conferences, or any synchronous uh, conferences. Pero si teacher has to be available during his schedule or during her schedule to to entertain questions or clarificatory questions from the student. So students would uh, so, so he or she could be able to address the mga confusions to mga estudyante kung sa material na sinurupay niya. But another question now is, yung module ba ba na, na, ba na binigay? Yung, yung, yung content ba na nilagay doon sa learning management system ay klaro para maunawaan sa agad ng estudyante habang binabasa nila. That's the question. Okay, now my point is, why am I, why, why am I giving you this kind of conference? Why? Because I am not sure. I am not sure if you could be able to understand the things I am posting in our learning management system. Kasi I am not a good module writer. So what I put there, kung ano lang, kung ano lang nakita ko sa mga references, yun lang nilalagay ko sa learning management system ninyo. So in a way, nakakatulong naman siya for you to read it and for you to understand it. But it would not guarantee for me, huh, for me, my assessment, that wouldn't guarantee my students, my learners, to fully understand everything I provided in the learning management. That's why I am still doing, I am still doing this video conference. And also, I have to consider that this course is a professional course. Okay, yun yung mga, yun yung mga, mga kinoconsider ko. Okay, but certainly, if teachers would provide you, ano, modules na, na talaga na itindihan nyo kaagad yung module, certainly the teacher needs, the teacher needs not to conduct uh, this kind of conferences this kind of synchronous learning or record that discussion. Okay, per example with Jobins, that's a that is a perfect example of the perfect example of the non-alignment or in uh, or non-congruency of the, the test, of the paper and pencil test, and that of the amount of learning content being provided to the student. Okay? Hindi talaga siya akma. Okay, that's a very good example, Jobin. Okay, any other concern as regards table of specification? Sir? Yes, Brenda? Good morning po. Good morning. Sir, regarding po sa mga math subjects namin, um, based on our experience po kasi, sir, yung mga example na binibigay ng teachers or yung mga ibang tasks, eh, ang dadali, sir. Pero in terms of quizzes na po, tsaka yung exam proper, eh, ang hihirap na po, sir, parang hindi na siya align dun sa mga task and example na binigay po nila. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Okay, that's, that's another issue on congruency, no? Kasi parang you really didn't prepare them well. Kasi if, if the exam, if, if, the, if, the, if the weekly tasks are very easy, tapos biglang humirap siya doon sa, humirap siya doon sa quizzes or doon sa exam, then we need to say the weekly task is not, that did not really help the students prepare themselves for a better score in the quiz or even in the major exam. Kaya sabi natin na, kaya nga sabi natin lagi, when you do activities, when you ask the students to do activities, all these activities, all these learning activities, or even teachers, uh, teaching activities, should really be rooted, or should really be rooted from the learning outcomes. So, yun nga nangyayari, nagkaparoon ng 
uh, nagkakaroon ng hindi magkakatukmang mga gawain pagkatuto, hindi nakakatulong yung mga previous na gawain pagkatuto, yung mga dating gawain pagkatuto, para nang sa ganun mga kuha ng magandang score o mataas na score sa estudyante sa mga mahahabang pagsusulit o doon sa mga uh, doon sa mga maikli pagsusulit. Okay? Now, you're experiencing that now. So, meaning to say, as teachers, you have to consider all these things that we are discussing now. Kapag teacher na kayo, you have to learn from that. Ah, kailangan pala yung mga pinapagawa ko sa mga estudyante ko ay naka-align sa learning outcome at yung pinapagawa ko sa kanila dapat makatutulong sa kanila para lalo pa nilang mapaiksing ang kanilang pagkatuto, para lalo pa nilang mamalinang ang kanilang kakayahan sa mga iba pang mga pagsusulit, sa mga iba pang mga gawain na aking papagawa sa kanila. Okay? So, that is a question that we have to ask ourselves always when we do planning for instruction, when we do planning for learning. Okay, that's a good example, uh, Brenda. Okay? So, ay naman talaga, uh, pero you know, this has always been a mistake among teachers like us. Okay, ito talaga, kung titignan, ng ngayon nyo, tayo nga na nahihirapan, di ba? Uh, kami, kami nga na nahihirapan to align all these activities. How much more with students like you? Di ba? Di ba? Yun ang sasabi natin na uh, yung alignment and congruency. Okay? So, that's a good example, Brenda. Okay, any any question? Thank you, Brenda and Jobin, for reacting in our discussion. How about the others? You might want to add something based on your reading, or you might want to ask a very important question that is related to uh, that is related to our topic today. Claire, Sir. yes, Claire. Sir, good morning, po. Good morning. Sir, what Sir, paano po kapag um, one method yung pinos sa um, LMS, sir? Because hindi pa namin masyadong maintindihan yung methods na, na ginamit ng teacher, sir. So, kami, sir, eh, nag-adapt kami ng admins na sadalian ka, pero hindi po considered yun sa kanya, sir. Paano Ay, po yun, sir? Uh, ito yung sabi natin na yung flexibility ba ng teacher and at the same time developing students' uh, critical thinking skills or even creativity skills to think of other methodologies in solving a math problem. Ngayon, ang tanong ko, nung hindi nyo naintindihan yung methodology na provide sa LMS, did you ask the teacher to explain it further? Clear. Did you ask your teacher to explain it when you, found, when you find the difficulty of understanding the method? Sir, kasi sabi niya pa sa amin eh, ang gagamitin lang namin na method is yung pinas niya, sir. Pero, hirap po namin intindihin kasi, sir. O, oh, pero, uh, nag-request kayo na i-explain niya kung paano? Hindi, sir. O, oh, yun lang. Kasi, kung nagtanong kayo, at kailangan nag-request nag, nag, ano, nag, nag, uh, nag kayo sa kanya na i-explain niya kung paano talaga, okay, um, then kung explain niya na nang, mab nang mabuti, then that would mean na uh, kaya niyong gawin yung methodology. Pero kulang nga ang input, di ba? Yun, nagkulang tayo ng teacher's activities or teacher's intervention for, for students to learn the learning content. Yun ang naging problema natin. Pero, pero if you have asked sana sa teacher na, sir, kailangan namin ng verbal discussion okay, about the method kasi hindi namin maintindihan. Lalo na kung most of you. Nakita ba niya yun na most of you hindi naintindihan? Nakita ba niya yun? Hindi ko lang po alam, sir. O, kasi kung kuha ko si Pero, teacher halimbawa, kuha ko si teacher halimbawa, tapos nakita ko na, hmm. nakita ko na gumamit kayo ng ibang, ano, gumamit kayo ng ibang, ibang methodology, okay, gumamit kayo ng ibang methodology to solve the problem, ibig sabihin, sabihin ko, ah, baka hindi na naintindihan yung pinos ko. So, I need to discuss it to them. So, that, 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 that would serve as a message for me to do an intervention for you to understand the methodology I posted in the LMS. Ito, ito rin yung sabi natin na makulang minsan sa mga teachers na katulad namin. Mer meron din kami kakulangan para unawain yung pangangailangan ng mga estudyante. This is what we always say in our educated students, that as teachers later on, you have to have that ability also to identify the needs of your learners through their output. Dapat meron tayong mga signs, the output of the students 
the learning outputs of our students in our classes should provide us a time whether we need to we need to provide another intervention or we need or we can move forward to another lesson okay so this is sabi natin for example sa inyo nga sabi ko kaya nga lagi ko inexpect din sa inyo yung result ninyo ng assessment kung bakit ganoon yung score ninyo okay nang sa ganun the next time that i would ask you to do it okay you can already you will already know how to do it Ang katulad niyan, yung sa rubrics ninyo. Sir, bakit hindi kami perfect yung sa rubrics na ito? Then I explain it to you now. Na marami sa inyo ang hindi nakasunod doon sa descript kung paano sulat ang descriptor talaga. Na kailangan quantitative yung descriptor kapag analytic rubric. Ibig sabihin, kailangan merong measurement or, or concrete measurement of that descriptor for each level of the learning continuum. So parang ganun ang dating natin. Feedback is really very important. And, and the feedback... And, uh, and, and teachers can only identify the concrete needs of the learner for remediation of the lesson or even for the advancement of the lesson based from the result of the assessment task, based from the result of the learning activities that teachers have been asking students to do in class. Okay? Yun yung sinasabi natin na, sinasabi natin na, ano, na alignment talaga ang problema. Marami ako nakikita na, na minsan, na minsan mo pinapagawa ng mga teachers eh, hindi talaga siya ganun ka-valuable or ganun katindi to prepare our students in the bigger assessment time. Okay? Sagit lang ha. So, uh, clear that is uh, that is a good example, no? Yung sinasabi natin alignment pa rin. Again, sinasabi natin alignment, when we say alignment, make sure that all the learning tasks we ask them do will prepare them for be will prepare them for uh, for a better result of the succeeding quizzes or succeeding assessment. Okay? So, we now proceed to another content of our discussion. We now proceed to test construction. Okay? So, put on the test construction. Allow me to present this presentation. Uh, this presentation, uh, I, I actually have delivered this presentation uh, in school year 2014-2015 about a constructing test or uh, how to how to construct um, how to construct paper and pencil test types. Uh, including multiple choice, alternative response, essay test types, and others. So maybe now proceed to this presentation. So we now proceed to a short guide to writing effective test questions. Uh, the, the references I cited in our LMS, okay, the that uh, that PDF file can actually be downloaded. Okay, and and that PDF file is my reference now, okay, for our discussion, for our next discussion about writing effective test questions. Okay? Now, uh, ito yung mga researchers na ginawa sa US, 
about uh, about that construction right in the in the literature how teaching matters 2000 it says there that teachers tend to use tests that they have prepared themselves much more often than any other type of test okay and they usually ginagawa ng mga teachers they make use of the test they usually prepare for themselves than uh, using other type of test. Another literature said that while assessment options are diverse, ibig sabihin maraming klase ng mga assessment, okay, most classroom educators rely on text and curriculum embedded questions and tests that are overwhelm, uh, overwhelmingly classified as paper and pencil. So, halos sa ating mga teachers, do maraming klase ng assessment, assessment, uh, assessment uh, strategies. For example, uh, performance-based tests, uh, portfolio assessment, and other types of assessments. Okay, teachers would usually make use of paper and pencil tests. In case to we, we are doing that, di ba? We may, we usually make use of paper and pencil tests. Then another literature said, formal training in paper and pencil test construction may occur at the pre-service level. So, the pre-service level, ito yung katulad ng ginagawa ninyo as students ng, teach, ng, ng teacher education, yan yung natawag natin pre-service level. Because you are still learning, okay, you are still learning how to become a teacher in the future. So, that's pre-service learning level. At sinasabi dito sa research na ito, formal training down in paper and pencil test construction of course, at the pre-service level, that is 52% of the time. Or as in-service preparation, the 21%. Yung in-service, na tawag natin yung practice teaching ninyo. Okay. Then a significant number of professional educators, 48% report no formal training in developing, administering, scoring, and interpret interpreting text. Okay. 48% na halos kalahati na. Okay, ng mga, for, ng mga professionals daw, professional educators ay walang training when it comes to preparation of paper and pencil test. Uh, tignan niyo yung first three literature, ha? Okay. Most teachers daw, ang ginagawa nila, pinapatest nila yung sarili nilang gawang test. Yung sarili nilang gawang paper and pencil test. Pero sinasabi ng second literature naman ay, ang sinasabi ng paper literature naman ay, na kahit maraming klase, maraming metodolohiya para tasahin ang pagkatuto ng mga mag-aaral, ang pinakalaging ginagamit ng mga guro para tasahin ang kaalaman ng mga mag-aaral, ang pag-unawa ng mga mag-aaral, ay gamit ang paper and pencil test. Ngayon, sinasabi naman ngayon sa third literature na ang paper and pencil test, test construction, Ang formal training on paper test and test construction ay ginagawa daw 52% during their pre-service training at 21% during their preparation at uh, during their in-service preparation. At halos kalahati ng mga professional educators wala talagang training when it comes to paper and pencil test. So anong message na sinasabi ngayon? Okay? With the three related literature being mentioned. Ano ngayon ang sinasabi ng tatlong literature na ito? Paano siya masasummarize? Ha? O yun sinasabi ng tatlong literature ngayon. Ano ngayon ang paano nyo ngayon masummarize ng mga literature na ito about test construction and paper and pencil test? Sige. Uh, that's a reflection for you. Okay, ngayon. Another, 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 ano, another uh, research on assessment says, if students report a higher level of test anxiety over teacher-made tests than over standardized tests. This standardized, ito lang sa guidance, placement exam, that's standardized. Sabi nila, mas sobra daw ang takot at yung anxiety ng mga estudyante kapag ang kanilang tinetake na exam ay yung ginawa ng teacher kaysa sa doon sa standardized test. Now, anong reasons nila? Top three reasons of their anxiety. One, first, poor test construction. Second, irrelevant or obscure material coverage. When you say irrelevant, material coverage obscure, it does not represent the things being discussed by the teacher. And number three, unclear direction. 
So ito daw yung top 3 na dahilan kung bakit merong higher level of test anxiety ang mga estudyante sa teacher make test. Kayo ba merong experience anxiety when you take the test? O si Richard na, pakinggan natin si Richard. Richard, were there times that you are that your that your level of test anxiety is really very high? So yes, sir. O ano mga subjects yan na meron kang, meron kang mataas sa level of test anxiety? Sir, dati eh, Kwan, English, lalo na dun sa, Kwan, creative non-fiction, writing, ganun. Oh, bakit, bakit? Mga grammar, mga, mga writing, writing, sir, kasi mahina dati ako sa, Kwan, Graham. So the reason Trans is because of personal, not because of the construction of the test. Ah, uh, sir, pero meron din, sir, yung dati, yung mga teacher ko, kasi grabe magbigay ng exam. So, parang pagka exam na naman, ala, exam na naman, ganun, sir. Parang, ang hirap mag-review, ang, ang hirap mag-focus, sir. Ah, okay. So, so sabi mo sa research, every time na, oh. sir? Ah, oh, sige, sige, tuloy mo. So, every time na may exam, sir, parang, andun na yung takot ko, sir. Hmm, because of the experience. Ah, sir. Okay, so, ito yung sinasabi ng mga researchers. So, ibig sabihin lamang nito na kailangan talaga that teachers will be well equipped with know-how and follow appropriate principles for developing and using assessment methods in their teaching, particularly in constructing paper and pencil tests, so that they will be able to avoid common pitfalls or common failures in student assessment. Because if we really would like to assess our students' level of understanding, our students' advancement of learning, then the kind of test that we have to give them should really be appropriate, should really follow all principles, and should really measure real learning of our students. So you can sabi ng mga researchers na, yan. Hence, the purpose of this lesson, that as future teachers, that as you are already in your pre-service training, that you really have to learn, okay, the different principles, the different types of paper and pencil test because certainly when you are already in the profession, you would also be asking learners to complete paper and pencil test to check their level of understanding, to check their advancement of learning. Now, please take note that there are two general categories of paper and pencil test or test items. And these Categories include objective item, and the second one is subjective or essay item. So, ano yung difference ng dalawa? Okay, please take note of this. Objective items include the following. Multiple choice, true, false, or ang tinatawag natin alternative response. Okay? Uh, multiple choice, when it's tinatawag ng multiple response. Okay? Ano yung multiple choice? You just have to select the best answer. Pag, pag multiple response, you have to select two answers. Okay? Sa exam nyo later, mayroon tayo multiple response test. Okay? Then true false can be classified into two. We have alternative response or alternate response. Okay? Yun yung you just have to check whether the statement is true or false. Then the other one is structured response. Ito yung merong A. A4, A if, B if, C if. That is structured response. And we have a uh, simple recall test, okay, and simple recall, recall test can be identified into two. The one is matching type, and the second one is completion type. Okay, again, multiple choice, we have multiple choice slash multiple response. We have true, false, meron dalawang klase, alternate response or alternative response, and the other one is multiple response. A uh, simple recall test includes matching and completion. So these are the different types of objective tests. Okay. Now, when we say subjective items include essay, okay, as ito yung mga yon, short answer essay, o yung tinatawag din closed type essay. Bakit closed type essay? Because there's a requirement, there's a structure that you need to follow. Ilang paragraph, ilang sentences, ilang words, that is closed type essay. Yung 
yung i-fill out lang ninyo kung anong line na binigay, that is closed type essay or short answer essay. Then the second one is extended response essay. Ito yung mahaba. Okay, pag sabi extended, there's a question but there's a, there's a follow-up question. That is extended response essay. For example, um, what is more important? Uh, what is more important uh, in uh, what, which of the uh, which of Atelier, uh, which of the following uh, which of the following uh, which of the following sociological pro, uh, social processes would be helpful in understanding poverty? Okay, which type of poverty? Urban poverty or rural poverty? So, meron siyang follow-up question that is extended response essay. Okay? Then we have problem solving in math. This is problem solving. Subjective po iyan. Kasi nagiging subjective siya kasi when you solve problems, pwedeng iba-ibang methodology or solution ang gamit ng estudyante but they arrive into one answer. Okay? The next one is performance test items. Okay? So these are the different subjective items tests. Now, please take note. Okay, the other information about uh, this test type, you can you can read them in the LN. Now, generally, creating a test is one of the most challenging tasks confronting an instructor or a teacher. Unfortunately, many of us have had a little, if any, preparation in writing tests. So, kahit yung mga teachers natin ngayon, they really have, uh, we really have, okay, we really have a dearth of opportunities for us to learn or for us to be trained well of how to write there or how to prepare test items. Now we proceed to the different tips on that day. Okay. Now we proceed on the first one, the length of test. Gano ba kahaba dapat ang test? 50 items ba? 100 items? Or 100 items? Or 150 items, you have to consider that. Again, ang mga factors you consider natin is number of items. You have to consider yung mga topics na discuss natin. At the same time, uh, per topic, you have to consider also the amount of time we, we use or we exert that to discuss the lesson. Okay? Yun ang basihan natin kung gaano kahaba yung test items natin. Second, clear and concise instructions. Okay, so we also make sure that when we create tests, okay, we have to provide clear, we have to provide clear but brief instruction on how students are supposed to complete the test. Okay, for example, do you think this is a clear instruction? Find the unknown, show your solution. Is that a clear, uh, clear instruction? This is not or this is an unclear instruction. Why? What do you mean by unknown? Which unknown they have to find? Okay, and 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 uh, for example, you have to provide a uh, for uh, for example, okay, pag sinabi nating um pag sinabi nating clear instruction, uh, meron yung naglalagay na match column A with column B. Do you think that's a clear instruction? No, it's not a clear instruction. Better say match, okay, match for example, match the learning uh, match the category uh, match the learning outcome in column A to the category or level it represents in column B. That is a clear and concise instruction in doing matching test type. So you make sure that our instructions when we, when we draft our test items are very clear for our students. Then our test, our test should have a mix of different types. Hindi pwede na puro multiple choice na lang. Hindi rin pwede na puro structured response na lang. Hindi rin pwede na puro problem solving na lang. There should be a mix of the different test types. Because weaknesses connected with one kind of item or component or in student's test taking skills will be minimized. Kasi meron mga sigyante na mga galing sa multiple choice. May mga sigyante na mga galing sa structural response. May mga sigyante na mga galing sa problem solving. And mixing up the different test types in a test would address, would address different types of learners. Patandaan po natin na may mga estudyante, we also have to give chance boss 
to different types of learners that we have in the classroom. So we need to say, make sure na meron pa rin silang items sa mga sagutan na madali at meron pa rin items sa mga sagutan nila na challenging. That's what we call as mixing up the different test types when we do test. Okay, and uh, this is uh, this is also uh, this is also uh, a tip that we have to consider testing early. If students often need a practice test to understand the format which instructor uses and anticipate the best way to prepare for and take particular tests. Then I say, make sure that the quizzes you ask students do will also prepare them in taking the major exam. So for example, like multiple choice ka sa mga quizzes, so make sure na meron kayong multiple choice doon sa, doon sa summative exam, doon sa major exam. Kapag nagpa-true false ka doon sa exam, make sure din na meron kang true false doon sa, meron kang true false doon sa test mo. Okay? This is to at least address, okay? To at least address, okay? To at least prepare, should I say, our students in the major examination. Next is test frequency. Bakit frequency? Kaya matuwa kayo kung meron laging task, kung meron laging quiz itong si teacher. Because the quiz and the task will actually prepare you for the major exam. Yun nga lang, ang, 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 ang issue dyan, yung sinabi niya example kanina, na sir, paano kung ang dami ng mga activities, pero what di naman nakakatulong para sa major exam? So that's a question. Okay, but ideally, there should be frequent tests or frequent uh, assessment tasks for our students so to prepare them for the major exam. Pero kung hindi aligned, then yun lang. Okay, kung hindi naka-aligned, kung hindi congruent, yung mga pinapagawa ni teacher to prepare them for the major exam. Yun lang ang challenge, yun lang ang problema. But, uh, testing frequently is really, should really be preparing, okay, should really prepare our students for major exam. Then check for accuracy. Items developed by a previous instructor, a textbook publisher, can save a lot of time. So for example, nangopia ka na lang sa internet ng mga questions. Okay, nangopia ka na lang ng mga questions sa textbook. That will save your time. Kasi hindi ka na mahihirapang mag-prepare. But make sure that you check the accuracy and appropriateness of these ready-made exams, ready-made questions before you include them in your test. Kasi baka mamaya naglagay-lagay ka na lang kapos hindi mo pala na-discuss, that's a problem. O di kaya naglagay ka doon tapos searchable pala sa internet, then hindi na, hindi na nag-analyze yung studyante kasi kinopya na lang yung sa internet yung sagot niya. This is what we call as checking for accuracy. Okay? I'll just get water please. So that's checking for accuracy. Next one, we have to proofread, proofread our exam. Because you know, even if we have to do this, we have to do proofreading because tiny mistakes such as misnumbering the responses can cause big problems later. Okay, so we really have to proofread our exams before we publish them or before we, ask, or before we let this exam be taken by our students. Special consideration, use of dictionaries, calculator, extra time, separate testing sites, or other special conditions have to be considered also. For example, you remind your students, uh, class, you may make use of your dictionaries when you are to take the exam, you may make use of a calculator, you, you have to consider all these things. Kailangan ba nila ng extra time? Kailangan ba nila ng separate room? Kailangan ba nila other special conditions? These things have to be considered when you ask students to take them. Halimbawa, meron kang sudyante na blind. So, kailangan mong ipabrail, di ba? Ipabrail yung exam para sa umakasit ng exam yung blind student. Then, you also put a little humor when you, when you do tests. Okay? Para nang sila to reduce the anxiety of the student. For example, uh, what I usually do is to put the names of my students as examples in the exam. 
or in the cell. That is adding your humor. Nang siguro makita naman si Dante na, ah, oh, naalala ko ni teacher. Ay, naalala ko kasi napagdik yung pangalan ko sa exam. Okay? But of course, make sure naman na, make sure naman na ang nababanggit mo sa exam ay hindi naman lagi, na, hindi, hindi mo naman lagi nababanggit yung isang sigyante sa exam kasi baka mamaya, baka mamaya mamit-interpret na favorite mo yung estudyante. So make sure that the students are well represented also when you cite them as examples in class. Okay? I mean in the exam. Okay? Okay, now the question now is when to use essay or objective test? Kailangan ginagamit ang essay at objective test. Ito. Essay tests are appropriate when first, the class or the group to be tested is small and the test is not to be reused. Pag hindi mo gagamitin yung test ulit, yung question ulit, at the same time, konti lang yung sidyante mo, then you can make use of essay test. Bakit? Kasi kapag mo pa-essay ka sa marami, mahihirapan ka mag-check. Tama? At kapag ipapa, paggagamitin mo ulit, okay, then pwede, makuha, pwede mag-prepare na si sidyante si, si ng ready answer niya. So the first, uh, the first condition, that you can appropriately make use of essay test is when the class size is small, when you have few students only, and at the same time you're not going to repeat the question being asked in the essay test. Next, if you wish to encourage and reward the development of student skill in writing, if you really would like to check whether students are good at writing, then that's the time that you ask them to do an essay test. But if your measurement is not about their writing skills, then you need not to make use of an essay test. Third, if you are more interested in exploring the student's attitude than in measuring his or her achievement. So kung ang, ang interesado ko lang ay makita lang yung, yung pag-ugali yung sudyante mo, yung learning attitude sa sudyante mo, then you make use of the essay test or subject to it. So these are the three reasons or three conditions when essay tests or subjective tests are appropriate for your learners. How about objective tests? Objective tests are appropriate when the first, the group to be tested is large and the test may be reused. Kasi pwede mo magamit-gamit pa ulit-ulit ang objective test type. Okay? So kung i-reuse mo siya, ang test mo, and at the same time masyadong marami kang sigyante, then you make it an objective test. When highly re reliable scores must be obtained as efficiently as possible. If you would like to know, if you would like to gather reliable scores of the students, you make it of objective test. Kasi nga, merong definite answer. Kaya reliable siya. Pero kapag uh, essay kasi, pwede magbago rin eh. Yung scoring mo, depende din sa klase ng sigyante, no work na uh, sinecheck mo. Malibang kung merong kang rubric in assessing or in checking the essay type. Next is impartiality of evaluation, fairness, and freedom from possible test scoring influences are essential. Because if there's one correct answer, then wala ka talagang takas kung di tama yung sudyante. Wala kang, tapa, wala kang, wala kang ibang dahilan na imali yung sudyante kung talagang tama yung sagot niya. That's objective test type. So these are the three reasons, ha? Okay, now, you can also make use of either essay or objective test if can be used to, first, measure almost any important educational achievement a written test can measure. So you can make use of both essay or objective. You can make use of both test types if you test understanding and ability to apply principles, the ability to think critically, and the ability to solve problems. So if these are all your reasons, okay, why you do test, then you can make use of either essay or objective test. Okay? So remember those. Okay, so before we continue, okay, you might want to ask questions. Okay, you might want to ask questions before we continue. We still have remaining uh, eight minutes for the question and answer portion or for the open forum. Ah, meron ang message sa, okay, sir, pagpa-seminar ka naman sa mga teachers regarding this, ha? Yeah, I did once, ano, Jovin. I did one seminar, I did one in-service training uh, for teachers before, I think noong 2014 and 2015. But syempre, nagbago na yung mga teachers natin ngayon. Iba, iba na sila, may mga bago na. So, baka kailangan pa nila. I just do not know. But I have an invitation now already from uh, the Dead Tech group. 
from the medtech group, medtech faculty, to train them on assessment. So I'll be talking with them, I'll be talking for them next week on uh, assessment. Okay, any question as regards the previous discussion? You might want to clarify something. Jobert, welcome to our class. Jobert, you might want to clarify or you might want to supplement. A uh, charge, meron ko sabihin charge? Sir, yes, may call lang ako. Based on my experience, sir, mm -hmm. may mga teacher kasi na um, yung the whole term, eh puro essay lang yung binibigay. Mm -hmm. So, paano na yung mga ibang estudyante na mahina sa essay, tapos magaling sa multiple choice. So, parang ang unfair na hindi justifiable kung sakali yung grade, sir. Kasi, as in the whole term, essay, tapos, tapos pag exam naman, sir, eh, multiple choice. So, parang, ang hirap mag, so, nahihirapan kami sa multiple choice na sa sir, kasi hindi naman kami na pre-prepare okay. sa exam na, sir. Oo. Yung sasabi natin na yung kanina, sasabi natin sa general tip na mix, mixing up the different test types. Una, uh, ang essay kasi hindi siya, hindi talaga siya applicable uh, hindi siya, hindi siya ganun karelaya po when it comes to uh, measuring specific learning content. Kasi una, hindi lahat ng mga estudyante ay merong writing skills. Tama? Not all students do have a writing skill na kailangan laging essay ang ipapa-assessment ko sa kanila. No, that's not, that's not supposed to be done. Kasi yung sasabi natin na even the test should cater the different, uh, should cater the diff, uh, should cater student diversity. Okay, hindi lahat na, oh, kung ang, sa, sa ano, siguro sa, sa writing, for example, ang subject mo ay English, tapos ang focus is development of writing skills. Understandably, kailangan mo ng essay na appropriate test type. Pero, in, in other subjects, for example, uh, in major subjects, for example, this of professional subject, as much as possible, we make use of the different test type, test type. We have to mix up our, our, our the different test types to make sure that all students are being addressed when we do assessment, when we do major examination. Talaga, malibang kung mer meron ba siyang ano, uh, David, meron ba siyang ano, meron ba siyang, uh, meron ba siyang rubric? Okay, in, in, in put in assigning scores doon sa mga essays ninyo? Sir, nung, nung una, sir, wala. Tapos, hmm. siguro na-realize niya na wala siyang rubric. Tapos, nung kwan na, sir, meron na. Pero, yun lang, sir, kasi em, lahat ng essay niya, same ng point. Parang, kwan lang siya, constant na puro, kunwari 50 points lang hanggang tapos ng midterm. Puro hmm. 50 points lahat ng essay, sir. Major exam yan, yung essay? Eh, Ay, sir, okay lang, sir. Um, learning touch lang ng the whole term. Oh, hindi. Or 50-50-50. Oo, oh, yun yung sasabi natin, kulang ng variety yung mga assessment tasks. And isa sa mga principles in doing assessment tasks, in, in doing learning activities or designing learning activities for our students, is variety. Ibig sabihin ng variety, dapat hindi para parehas all throughout. Dapat iba-iba. To prepare, okay, to at least prepare students uh, to prepare, uh, to at least prepare students uh, the skills in doing or skills necessary in completing successfully a major exam. So yun nga ang problema. Thank you for the sharing, uh, David. Kasi we can learn from that experience. Again, uh, a reminder to would-be teachers like you. When you are already in the profession, when you, would do already, when you will be already in the profession, make sure that you have varied learning activities for your students, varied assessment tasks for your students to target differences to target student diversity. Kasi kawawa talaga yung mga estudyante na pag-essay ka, puro essay ka, kawawa yung mga, mga nahihirapan when it comes to writing, yung mga walang writing skills talaga. And we also have to respect student diversity in class, the differences of our students when it comes to their skills. Not all students do have that skill in writing. Okay, ako nga hirap, hirap mag-sulat eh. Okay? Tapos bibigyan mo ko lagi ng essay, ah, uh, forgivable pa yung ano, forgivable pa yung minsan ng essay lang, and others, pero yung lagi-lagi yung essay, wala ka na ibang activity, that is really a difficult, uh, a difficult uh, experience for learners. Pero ano subject yan, David, ba? Para tignan natin yung appropriateness ng essay. Ano subject yan? Para tignan natin yung appropriateness ng essay. Major subject siya, sir. Um, oh, yun, yeah, maka yan. 
the more na dapat ano, the more na dapat uh, hindi essay, mas better nga si performance assessment eh. Okay? Kung kung ano siya, kung kung mapes siya. Oh, yun ang problema. Okay, anyway, uh these are experiences that we have to learn from. Okay? Thank you, Charles, about your work. Jobert, you might want to ask Jamila about Jamila. Hello, sir. Ah, yes, Jobert. Sir, uh, clear naman last year. I, may nabasa lang kasi ako, sir, na one na, na isang article about assessment na along with the length of the test, we should also consider the time of, uh, yung time na, kwan, sir, na, na, na yun? Yung time, sir, na required in taking the exam, sir. Very true. Uh, for example, sir? Uh, sa Paris, si Anibawa, one and a half hour yung exam. So, i-consider mo rin kung kung itong items ba na ito ay sapat yung one and a half hour para matapos yung estudyante. Yes, sir. How about, ano, how about dun sa exam natin nung prelim? Enough ba yung one and a half hour? Sure, actually, Kwan. Sa prelims natin naman, okay. Pero sa other subject kasi, sir, we have essays. For example, dalawang essay, then good for 20 minutes lang siya, sir. So, parang because of that, hindi namin natatapos, sir. Okay. I, I, think, uh, I think this is a feedback also given by some students, by some student leaders, na parang they're requesting if, if, the, if the duration of taking the exam can be extended kasi daw nakaka, naka, yung sa, lalo sa intermittent internet connection, yung internet connection natin, kasi nakakabawas ng oras yung loading. Tama? Pag nag-load, pag mapagmahin na yung connection, nakakabawas daw dun sa time na allotted time yung loading ng data o loading ng content ng nasabing uh, quiz. So they're requesting if it can be, it can, it can be extended daw. Okay? So sa exam naman natin, baka meron iba sa inyo, you might want to extend it for two hours to set exam natin sa midterm because I can do that if you want to. Sir, 24 hours, chart. Sir, <laughs> <laughs> 24 hours. Sobra naman 24 hours. <laughs> yes, Adelina. Ay, Jovin. Sir, okay naman yung exam mo, sir. Sa iba lang talaga, sir. Kasi nag-require pa sila ng ano, sir. Kunyari, sa essay is... 6 to 10 sentences. Eh, tapos, ano lang kasi, sir, dapat eh, separate, dapat separate yung essay dun sa may multiple choice, sir. Kasi yung, yung sa exam namin, sir, is, nakakain ko, sir, kami ng essay agad-agad dun pag nakotingin kami. Parang nababahala kami sa time, sir. Yeah. Parang ganun, sir. Yeah, correct. Jovis, I think this one thing also, no, thank you for letting me, let, uh, for reminding me. Kasi this one thing that we have to consider also when we, uh, when we, when we ask our students to take the test, we also make sure yung arrangement ng test, yung sequence ng test, ay talagang ano, ay talagang ay, 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 ay talagang, talagang okay sa mga estudyante. Halimbawa, yung mixing of essay and multiple choice and an object test type, that is really not a good, ano, that is not really a good practice. Kasi una, madidisturb talaga yung estudyante. Oh, okay? So, super conscious sa time, tsaka na, punya rin number, okay. number one multiple choice, tapos number two, sir, continue mo, sir, ala, essay na siya agad, parang, okay. yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Kaya nga ako rin, eh, parang because you reminded me, iniisip ko ngayon na na ang gagawin ko ngayon siguro sa midterm exam ninyo, hindi lamang yung minsan ng uh, different uh, objective test types dun sa isa lang. Ang gawin ko na lang is part one, for example, multiple choice, another area, another another area for uh, for structured response, another area for multiple response. So sa ganun, uh, bahala na kayo kung anong unahin ninyo dun, yung multiple choice ba, yung response test ba, o yung ano... Yes, Oh, mas na mas orderly siya, no? Apo, sir. Uh, so we will do that for our midterm exam. Kasi kahit kahit nga si ano eh, that, that is what I feel uh, I feel doing nung prelim, nakalimutan ko. Uh, for midterm siya gawin natin kasi dun sa principle of ano, principle of the sequencing of the test type, dapat talaga o uh, multiple choice together true or false together, matching type together, and, uh, and basta per ano siya dapat, per test type, even the objective test. Okay, so we'll consider that. So thank you for reminding me of that. Thank you, sir. Okay, any more questions? 
it's twelve already. I know you're you're already happy. Sir, my ah, yes, yes. Sir, That's your question. my sir, my queries lang ako sa mga kwan sir sa ay may kwan lang ako sir sa mga worksheet natin sir sir. Can we suggest na kwan na ay pwede ba kami gumamit ng uh, Filipino language or Tagalog sir na soksa? Okay, thank you for for bringing that up. Okay. Sir, uh, dahil kwan sir apan uh, checking the checklist kasi sir eh walang kwan, walang wala kaming Filipino na kwan na making test question in Taraling Palipunan, wala kasi sir so. I understand that. Toto, toto naman yan. Okay, sige. So, ang gawin natin ngayon, for Soxai, for Soxai, may Filipino major ba? Wala, wala. For Soxai major, all your worksheets. Okay, so, ganito ang gawin natin, no? Ganito ang gawin natin. Uh, later on, sa sa final siguro, uh, or sa mga succeeding worksheet, I'll be providing a worksheet na Filipino for you, or for Soxai, then English na sa iba. Okay, I'll do that, okay? Nang sa ganun, matrain na kayo on the use of the language. Okay, thank you, Jover. Uh, about Jovin? Okay na, sir. Okay na, okay. So, Jover, gawin natin si Litina para matrain na kayo, no? Kasi, o oh nga, no? Nahihirapan talaga mga soft side kasi lahat ng, lahat ng medium of instruction natin, uh, medium of instruction natin sa lahat ng subject ay English. Tapos, wala pa kayong Para wala ba talaga? Parang alam ko meron sa checklist ninyo. Jover. Wala sir. Uh, teaching instructional materials for social studies. Ganun lang sir yung kwan namin. Uh, alam ko doon eh. Kasi I was, I was involved in the curriculum planning noon sa soft side. Then I actually have suggested for, I actually have suggested a separate, ano, a separate, a separate uh, course on the use of Filipino language in preparing uh, in preparing activity in preparing uh, in preparing the lesson plan and others para meron akong meron akong suggestion na subject na ano eh na na parang uh, para paggamit o uh, paggamit ng wikang Filipino paggamit ng wikang Filipino sa sa instruksyong Araling panlipunan. Para meron akong sinagyan sa ganyan nun. I just do not know. Parang hindi din follow ata. Anyway, so we'll do that in our in, in assessment. And, and and I hope na meron ako isang subject sa inyo later para gamitin talaga natin yung wikang Filipino. Uh, lalo na pag magturo kayo sa, sa field, ay talagang wikang Filipino naman ang gamit ninyo sa instruction. Okay? So thank you for letting me, uh, for reminding me of that, Joker. Okay? So it's already 12. And thank you for attending our class. I'll upload later and I'll, I'll provide the link later of the recorded session. For the others to get a pen or for you to replay it if in case that you would like to review the lesson. Okay, so for that, may we request Jamila to lead us the closing prayer. Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tapos na, sir. Okay. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, thank you everyone for attending our class. Okay, yung mga hindi pa nakapag-quiz, please, you just have to text me. When will you have the special quiz?